Welcome to this edition of Take 5. I am super excited to have as my guest right now, John Connors, the CEO and president of Jam Marini Skincare. And Jam Marini has a very unique approach and they are, they are taking on this COVID crisis with a vengeance. So, John, welcome to the program. Steve, thanks for having me. And uh, it's been great to watch these and big, been a long time fan of yours. Thank you. Thank you so much. So, John, can you tell us a little bit about how COVID has changed Jam Rini? Yeah, well, you know, it started off, if you look back on how this whole thing unfolded, we try to do as much as we could to stay, stay somewhat ahead of it. And back in early March, we saw that this was really kind of storm clouds were kind of gathering on the horizon. And so we started reaching out to our employees, letting them know that we were going to go ahead and put some things together that should directly affect them. Our, our number one goal, number one and two, were safety and security of our employees. That was the most important thing that we wanted to establish. And so with that being said, we actually, even before the mandates, the shelter in places were in place here in California, we actually went to a kind of a draconian work here at the corporate office where 80% of the employees were affected by it. So all that was left was our shipping department, accounting, and me and a couple other people. But everybody else went to a virtual model where basically they were on Zoom, and we did that even before uh, this was established. So that was that was one thing. The other part that we wanted to do was to make sure that you know that we could keep our team in place and not have any layoffs or furloughs, and we were able to accomplish that. We had a great Q1. And we really kind of look at this as going to be a temporary issue for us as a company. And we felt that there was going to be opportunity to allow for that accommodation. So we've been very impressed with the fact that we did not have anybody affected by it. And our employees, as you can imagine, are relieved and enthusiastic about that decision. Okay, but you mentioned something about virtual. And what I want to know is, can I order products virtually? Is that something that's new or unique that's really been accelerated since COVID? Uh, without question. We've had it for the last several years, but in terms of us now with the virtual and what we're doing through our reseller referral program, it's just gone, it's gone bonkers. We're talking about a, a dramatic exponential growth. And so the way that works is that, you know, we're actually doing, we'll get more into this, but we are doing some Zoom events where basically we're allowing our resellers to have their patients order online and it's shipped directly to them. And then the account is credited back for that transaction. Can I get away without carrying inventory? This is for our resellers only. And so you have to carry Jamarini, but you know, you can do as much in the credit program as you're doing as you're doing in your home office. Okay, so that's a new option for me that I didn't know about in the past. Yep, yeah, and it's been very well received. I'm not aware of anybody that's doing it as aggressively as we are. So yeah. we're shipping it all from California. We're giving free delivery, it's two day shipping. And so there is really no reason for somebody to be buying it from Amazon when it comes to Jamarini product. That is a patient of yours. And obviously that's a concern of many of my colleagues. All right, question number two. Do you think the aesthetic patient has changed from COVID? I think we, we're kidding ourselves if we don't think that they have been changed. When you look at the fact that the last six weeks, we've had 30 million people file for unemployment. Yeah. When you look at the fact that right now we're, we're, we're in a recession. Now they won't say that until July, but we, lo we lost 5% on the GDP in Q1. We're gonna lose 25 to 35, 40% here in Q2. So we are in a recession right now. And when you couple all that with the fact that, you know, the, the typical consumer, when they do come back as, as places reopen, they're gonna be a lot more germophobic than they've been in the past. And we have some people that are kind of the outliers and they have been, I think that's gonna be much more conventional. So I do feel that this is something in terms of the consumer, the consumer will have been affected by this. And for our resellers, the opportunity though is really, you know, they need to look at their business and say, if I'm gonna have a double digit drop off in services and aesthetic uh, procedures, what can I do to offset that? And we do believe skincare is an opportunity to help offset what they will see in terms of a drop off from the aesthetic uh, consumer. So I'd like to think, Steve, here by the end of the year that we'll see a, a vast improvement, but I do feel for the next several months that the aesthetic consumer has already been affected and they will continue to be affected, but hopefully through the course of the spring, uh, through the spring, summer, and into the fall, we'll see improvements there. And clearly, you know, skincare is an easy, it's not a very big leap. They can go right back to skincare, and I'm a little concerned about surgical patients, but I think skincare is going to be something that might keep my practice, you know, viable over the next few months or stronger. You know what, that's the way you need to look at it, is that if you look at e-commerce and trends that we're seeing in the March, in the month of March, we saw you know, in the COVID world, a 100% increase in e-commerce sales. 
from the consumer for skincare products. And so this is an area that offers tremendous opportunity for our resellers. And if you look at the typical reseller, we believe the typical reseller in skincare might do 5% of their total revenue in skincare. That is way lower than it should be. So if you're a $2 million practice and you're getting, call it $100,000 in skincare, if that $2 million practice is now going to see a huge drop-off, you know, a 30% drop-off in services and co cosmetic procedures for the remainder of the year, that can be offset by skincare. And part of that needs to be they have to have a retention strategy. So the consumer coming into your office shouldn't be looking at a $200 transaction. That consumer, in terms of what they're doing the next 12 months in skincare, it's a couple thousand dollars of revenue. You want to do what you can to own that patient. And Jan Marini allows that opportunity that we not only want to get the first sale, we want to have continuation of transactions where all, every transaction is credited back to you, the reseller. So even if they leave my office and go purchase it somewhere else, there's a way to make sure I get the credit. It is hard coded to you. So you introduce us to that patient and we do everything we can to. Now we basically have on your behalf, we're engaged with them on a regular basis. So not only do they start off with what they're purchasing from Jan Marini, but allows us to go back to them in 60 or 90 days and repurchase, let alone expose them to other products that we have in the portfolio. And I would get credit for other products they would purchase as well? Everything, yes. Okay, that's nice to hear. Question number three, John. What will Jan Marini do to stimulate the market and or my practice? Okay, you know, we're already doing that. If you look at, you know, you know uh, what we're doing as a company and, you know, the fact that we have, we have one of the largest sales teams that in, in skincare, by the way. Our sales and education team is 70 strong, nearly 70 strong. And that's, tr that's doubled in the last three years. And so, you know, what our approach is right now is we want to have our sales team and education team out there right now where you're likely closed, engage with you and your office managers. And so what we're doing is we're doing Zoom events where basically they're calling in their patients into a Zoom event. It could be 10 people, it could be 100 people. And we're giving, we're, we're providing them, you know, kind of a turnkey solution where it's focusing on skincare management system. That is our most decorated product that we have. It's been in New Beauty Magazine, 10 time uh, uh, award winner the last 10 years. The only product that's actually received that. So it really is best in class. We provide the GWP, which is typically at an $80, $90 GWP. Which it's GWP? Really, uh, gift with purchase. Okay. And then the reseller is actually doing something where they're giving something when they're phase two, which is when they reopen, where they're discounting a service, typically a microdermabrasion treatment or a facial. So you're pulling that patient back into your business once you're reopened. So that approach has done very well in terms of how it's been received. So we're shipping it on your behalf to your patient. While you're closed, you're making money. You're getting credits for that. The patient's happy. The reseller, we've had resellers have come back to us, Steve, and say this is emotional because it allowed them to pay for their rent while they're closed. And they're going through all this anxiety that we're all feeling and feeling like Jan Marini, the partnership opportunities I'm getting from them, I'm not getting from anybody else. Nice. Okay. Question number four. As CEO of Jan Marini, has COVID affected your leadership or your management style? I think our team would say probably yes. You know, I've always been known as being a passionate guy and somewhat hands-on, but I would say that how it's affected me the most is I've been more engaged, more hands-on. I've done more Zooms with not only the national team, uh, but regional teams, uh, the marketing team. You know, what we talk about is, you know, this break is not a break for us. So we're as engaged now as we were pre-COVID. But what I really challenge our education, our marketing, and our sales team to do is we got to look at this as a 2022.0. And this is a whole different world when 2.0 happens, which is really going to start happening now and into June and July. And so I'm much more engaged and I'm not looking at this as a break in action. I'm looking at this. We've got to make sure that we're pivoting to this and adapting in front of the rest of the market. We want to lead the market when it comes to what we're doing as a company and how that's being seen by our resellers. Question number five, your final and last question. What do you miss the most now that you're in isolation? Um, you know what? I mean, hey, we're, we're, we're up here in, in Los Gatos Mountains, you know, quick access to Monterey. We love Los Gatos, the town. You know, I miss seeing people here in the home office, my, my colleagues. I miss being able to engage with uh, heads of sales and, and flying to some destination for a few days and just really kind of fitting off their energy. 
I'm inspired by our team, so I miss that. I think our daughters miss their friends. And you know, we're the house that's kind of, we do a lot of sleepovers at our place. So I miss that. I miss having their friends over and seeing the joy that that group of four or six people bring. Yeah, I think we're all missing that quite a bit. Like I'm actually looking forward to just getting out and having dinner with friends. Yeah, yeah, definitely. You know, so, uh, you know, we're trying to keep our favorite restaurants, their lights on during this period of time. That's for sure. Yeah. All right, John, thanks so much for doing this take five. It was rapid fire. You gave a some good impressions and some good insights into Jam Marini and what you're thinking about moving forward. And um, look forward to seeing you on the other side of this. Okay. Thank you, Steve. Appreciate Thanks. it. Bye-bye.